very, very proud to present the hosts of the best voiceover podcast in the industry, VO Buzz Weekly. Please welcome my good friends Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswad. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswad. We are so excited to be here, to be a part of the Burbank Comedy Festival, and to be a part of this industry, and to be a part of your lives. Um, we, I don't know, I guess it was back in January 2012, the show launched. But mid-summer of 2011, Chuck and I, we would take these long, late-night walks down Ventura Boulevard. Uh -huh. Ventura Boulevard! We're you like, should we tan? Walks. Should we get a tattoo? We couldn't decide. We were like, just keep walking. <laughs> and we wanted to come up with an idea of something that we could do together collaboratively. And um, we'll share with you a couple of ideas that did not make the cut. <laughs> One being, you know, it's, it's, people have cooties and people have germs. And so I thought, you know, I like a good sparkle, right? So what about a mask with, you know, themes or dazzle sparkles. And we walked a few blocks and went, no. And then we realized, no. So then we said, well, we love our animals. And everyone who has animals know that whenever they have a procedure, they put that heinous cone on them, right? And so I said, well, we sit vigil and take turns watching over the animal and not use the cone. So I'm like, what about if we come up with some anti-cone device? So I'm drawing Just prototypes and, you know, it would be flat to the body. Anyway, that didn't make the cut either. I'm not fully sure that that one's dead, by the way. There are so Just many FYI. others that are ridiculous. Yeah. By but the way, this microphone is really hot. Yes, it is. And yes. probably so the is, one that's feeding back. So is Stacy. Oh. Yes! Yes! Do you take Venmo? Um, yes. Um, so, <laughs> so, so we decided to do something so, so else. So we decided to do Chuck? something different. Yeah. And uh, by the way, before I get into that, I want to ask, who is from out of town here tonight? Who came? Where are you Yay! from? Yay! Oh, London. London. Hello, Rachel. Yell out, yell out the city you're from. Vegas. And so, oh, oh. get out of here. Um, I so, think we walked to Encino on so one of our walks. One of the cool, one of the cool things for Stacy and I about doing this show um, is that we get to bring people together from all over the world, and we get emails and comments and com and and uh, just all kinds of cool little uh, posts and things about people from all over the world saying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I can't believe that you guys don't charge us a freaking dime to bring us this show. Um, and so, and I see a lot of big agents here tonight too. You guys must have closed shop early tonight to come here, so thank you, that is so cool. Um, but a few years later, today, seven years later, uh, VO Buzz Weekly YouTube channel is over, uh, oh, close to a, three million uh, views, uh, 100,000 100, views on our videos every single month, um, and just going crazy and growing every single day. So thank you. We appreciate it. So we're going to kick this off. We have a really packed show, so um, eat. If you like it, throw me a tater top. I'll try to catch it in my oh. mouth. Um, <laughs> First, our first guest, he is amazing. It's a quick intro because his body of work is incredible. But you know from Elena of Avalor, Rocco's Modern Life, yeah. Fairly Odd Parents. Yes. Give it up for Carlos Ellis Rocco! Thanks for not going into the dog cone business, the anti dog Speech! Cone. Speech! Hello, my name is Carlos, and I was a guest during your early years in your oh, yes. other studio. As and I called it, the yard sale staging area. Yes. The set looked like a yard sale staging yes. area. But it was good content. It was and good content. Great. Speaking of good content, stick around after the show and talk yeah. to us and come oh. to our show tonight. Bill Farmer's going to be here along with some other great voiceover actors. We're going to be doing stand-up and all that other stuff. Absolutely. But. We're yeah. sticking around for that yeah. for sure. Awesome. So, Carlos. Yes. 
You and Chuck have a fun little connection. Did you know this? ¿Por Chuck, qué? yes, sí. <laughs> Chuck was born in Cuba. Some people may not know that. I was. His birth name uh, is Carlos Alberto. Carlos, Carlos Alberto. Alberto Duran. But Duran. the best part is his mother read it in a romance novel and said, it must be my son. And so... It's true. Yeah. Carlitos. He's like the Cuban Fabio. Absolutely. Anyway. Hey, Capacho Carlitos. So, <laughs> that so, was a joke in my act. Was I, I was always, uh, my mom always called me Carlos, but my friends always called me Carlos. What's yeah. up, <laughs> Liz, man? Carlos. Yeah. Until I went to college and needed financial aid. Then yeah. it was Carlitos. <laughs> Stupid joke. But, pero, ¿tú hablas español? Yo sí hablo español. Sí, sí yo un poco. Yo but that's good for a voiceover actor, right? <laughs> because we have to learn different vowels and things like that. Completely. It works yeah. great. Sí. <laughs> oh, you know what? I got to tell that you. That Rosetta Stone is amazing. So, so the last time that we sat together and did an interview with Carlos, man, he has this thing where he does, and actually a lot of voice actors do this, but you're like spectacular at this. And I that's what know. I call doing character mashups where you take different voices oh, to create yeah. an actual voice. Yeah. Can you give Real us an life. example yeah. of a couple of yeah. those that you've used? For I some think of Rocker is, is a mashup of Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons, uh, Gene Wilder, and Richard Dreyfuss. I don't like panties hanging on the rug. Goodbye, girl. What a reference. Uh, Gene Wilder, you are not evil, you are good. And revenge is a dish best served cold, Smithers. And you get, Mother Harry's! When you mash them all together. Timmy Turner! Yeah. And here's some little voiceover secrets. Uh, if you saw Inside Out, I was the voice of, come, fly with me, Cachinha. Where have I heard that voice before? Yo quiero Taco Bell. Yeah. I was also fear in the dad's head. Sir, the foot is down, the foot is down. Where have I heard that before? I'm James Osvaldo Garcia from Reno 911. I ripped myself off. One of my personal favorites is El Chupacabra. El Chupacabra! I think, more of a, yeah, I think a so lot of you guys actually rip yourself off a little more than yeah. you. We do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little Jess, James Arnold, Taylor, Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche, all your guests. You know, we mine from people that we, we admire and we emulate and we all kind of, you know, stick our little things. I watched, you know, early on, I worked work with Charlie Adler. Oh dear, Rock, oh dear. <laughs> I think, you know, Jess can say when you're on a show, we all like to imitate each yeah. other, but yes. eventually, uh, we're like osmosis. If we're working with a really powerfully strong voiceover actor, actress, I just say actor because that, that encompasses everybody, yeah. that we all, uh, we're going to soak up some of what they do or, or how they do it. And so we eventually are, are mashing up uh, them, too, to create new characters. Yeah, so. yeah. So you're a dad, true I'm or a dad. false? I've two girls. Yes. Two girls. So Riley and Austin, seven and four. Riley! Riley! There they go, Riley. So Good artist name, Scott Parkin, <laughs> who has a very talented daughter, uh, uh, Miranda Parkin, yeah. whose artwork is off the charts. Plug, plug, yeah. plug. Space Fleet. Go ahead. Is she sketching us right now? She yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're a dad. Um, yes. Are there any traits or habits of yours that you would prefer your children not inherit? Oh, they already, I'm a rager, man. And my daughter, oh, she's seven years old, she's like pounding all the walls, going, ah! I said, I go, ah! I guess I rubbed off on you. Oh, gosh, you're already done it. <laughs> I wish I could be more like Rocco, very even keel and kind of nice, but I'm, I'm definitely more like Crocker. Shut up, you old bat! <laughs> I'm more Crocker than I am Rocco in real life. So I wish my daughters would be more Rocco than Crocker. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, if there's one thing that nobody understands about you, what is it? Oh, my gosh. That uh, I wanted to be taller. Uh, I don't know. You know what it is? Nobody, that nobody understands about me now is I grew up a jock. And I kind of didn't. I, in, my, in the 70s and 80s where I grew up, it's like, Carlos, how much do you bench? Dude, how much do you bench? It's 275, flat back. That's something that I don't think anybody knew about my past. I was such a jock and so blue collar and closed off to this wonderful world of art. And probably nobody would know that I came from that background. But thank God in college I started doing stand-up comedy and progressed yeah. with it and met yeah. some wonderful people in this community. And now I, I'm like, how much do you bench? Well <laughs> You're still pretty buff, though. You're holding up nicely. I do swimming now, yes. Thank yeah, you very much. And you have to. If you have kids, you got to keep up with yep. them. Yep. you got to be in shape. 
Do you, um, do you have any, do you, what do you envy about the opposite sex? Oh, boobs, I like that. What do I envy? <laughs> envy that the, 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 in my house, I envy that they get to be right most of the time. I'm very Good envious one. of being right. What do you mean I'm wrong? I'm not going to be wrong. Jerry said, I'm always wrong in my own house. I'm never right, Jerry. I'm never right. Who? Bernie Sanders. Who? I'm never right because my friend Scott Parker, 45% of the time, people are going to heckle. 50% of the audience that's against heckling will be 2% on the pro side. And that's why we need more people in this country. Yes. Uh, I did not pay Scott Parkin for that. Oh I want my free t-shirt. Besides, so besides Scott Parkin, what are you obsessed with? Uh, I'm as, oh gosh, what am I obsessed with? I am obsessed with um, Penny Dreadful, still, even though the show ended. Uh, Kari Walgren, Dee Bradley Baker, and Suzanne Blakesley, yeah. geniuses, would come to, we would come to each other's houses and obsess over Miss Ives. And I'm obsessed with Helen McCrory, who's also on another show called Peaky Blinders. And I gotta say this, I'm obsessed with being a husband and a dad. I love my family. I'm obsessed with my, with my family. And the voiceover. And voiceover. For, well, listen, man, I gotta tell you, the last time that Stacy were here at Flappers, um, for the first time actually ever, um, we, saw, we saw Carlos do stand-up yes. comedy here. And that's the first time we've ever seen him do stand up live and man you are so freaking good man thank you uh, you you really are you're you're, you. you're like really really great what is it about comedy that that, that, that draws you to it what do you love? i think it's the instant approval or disapproval should things go incorrectly or badly um, yeah, there's nothing like a live response. And, you know, VO World, uh, you know, Jess will tell you and all the other, we get to experience that at, at a convention. Right. Yeah. They'll come to you and say, man, I really love your work. Well, stand-up, that's kind of instantaneous. You get that laughter. It's a sense of power of controlling the room. My roommate, Sean Corbell, back in the day, he used to say, I'm the bus driver, and I like to be able to drive over a pothole and look at the audience and go, it's a pothole, you'll be all right. Yeah. It's that sense of control <laughs> that you get. And people appreciating what you dig. I, now I'm, I'm more myself and I'm telling stories about being infalli infallible or infallible uh, and, and making mistakes with my kids. People will come up to me and, and they say, I appreciate that because I've made mistakes and I've been yeah. afraid to yes. talk about it. I think yeah. that, that's one of the funnest, most fun parts of stand-up. Yeah, well, well, and it's cool to get the dad perspective because so often you hear female stand-up comments talk about the mom play. Yeah. So it's cool that you really um, you own your mess-ups there. The first line of my act, and if you want to come and see it tonight, so that I found to be so true was I was trying to... How do I juxtapose or justify wanting, still wanting to be famous but being a father at the same time? And I'm like, I remember this distinctly. I'd leave for a comedy show and Riley'd go, where are you going, Dad? And I'm like, I, I'm going to the comedy show. And she would say to me, I love you. And I would say, I'd say, I love you too, Riley, but not as much as the attention and adulation of strangers at the comedy club. That's a stronger love. Well, on You're that the second note best part of my day, Riley. Yeah. You're climbing. You're a great dad. But on that yeah. note, let's show Carlos some love, you guys. You. Stick around for the 7 o'clock show to see Carlos. Carlos! We're going to keep it going with one of our favorite people in the entire world. She's on Star Wars Rebels, Guardians of the Galaxy. She is real-life Wonder Woman to me, Vanessa Marshall. Here she comes. Just take a second and take it all in. Right? I'm doing a quick five. I, I used to do stand-up, so this is yes. like coming home. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? <laughs> yeah. That's how you like to hear. Yeah, so sketch and stand-up yes. were catalysts for your voiceover career to start, yeah? That is correct. Yes, uh, I did a one-woman show. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, it was, it a was cyber ahead of its time. Well, that's, by the way. that's what that's what my agent told me at the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I I played uh, Raoul uh, Rajneesh, and um, it was the night before his arranged marriage, and I uh, he had created a cyber dating game for himself. Now, for me, it was a meditation on technology's influence on interpersonal relationships, um, and <laughs> but that's you know why I'm single. But anyway. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got to play about 13 different characters and uh, an agent was in the audience and said, you know, you might want to try animation. And uh, I went in and I read for her and I've been at CESD ever since. 
Wait a minute. Do I see CESD out there? I somewhere. Hey. <laughs> there, there's somewhere. We love our CESD. Um, so, can you think about what has been one of your most memorable sessions, whether it's wackiest, Oh gosh. emotional? Well, there are a couple that come to mind. My, my favorite, probably the easiest one where I was paid more per word than ever before um, was for Valspar Paint. There was a, yeah, there was a, a lovely actress on ISDN in Chicago, and uh, she had to do all the heavy lifting, you know, like you can get 12 pints of whatever it was. And all I had to do was say, say what? <laughs> say what? For like three hours. For three hours? <laughs> Yeah, it was like one spot after another. This poor girl, like I said, doing all the heavy lifting. Uh, Vanessa, <laughs> say what? That was great. And then also, uh, I was one of the Welch's grapes uh, for quite some time. So that was an honor. That's good. Well, wait a minute, because you're the queen of the yeah. like the short line voiceover jobs. Is yeah. there another one you can give us that you did? Oh gosh. There was one like sexy Propel. one that you did. There was like. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Um, was it? Oh, well, there's that, but, but Dockers, yeah. Yeah! I had to whisper this. Now, any monkey could have done this job somehow. <laughs> you never know, it's like the salad days. They come and go, and then one time it's your turn, and you get to say, see where the night takes you. <laughs> Why me? I have no idea. Um, that, that was a good one. And then uh, for Propel Fitness Water, we launched that for uh, Gatorade, and I had to say, what if water worked harder? That's it. I don't know. I mean, what if water what did if? work harder? Who just not, took a drink know. right now, right? I'm not sure. Didn't but that I was also the, the engineer had like a sharp object. Is like, please, if you ask me, what if water worked harder one more time? I'm gonna kill myself. But anyway, that was a great gig. That's awesome, man. Hey, what is the best gift you've ever received? Okay, that's easy. This woman can cook dinner like no one on earth. There is, you know what? I gotta tell you, that's, I, I loved you before that, but in LA, so often, people are going so fast and, and it's really hard to connect with people. This woman cooked and slaved over, I, I mean, I can't imagine, it was a feast. I had never even spent that much time with you. And I, you invited me into your home and I, I literally almost started crying um, because it was such an, a kind gesture and it truly let me know who she is. People show you who they are through their actions. This is, this is an incredibly sweet couple here. We're very lucky she to be me here. On a good day. That, I swear to God, that literally was the best gift ever. Thank you so much. It's well, I, Vanessa's one of my favorite people to eat with. <laughs> yeah. Because we call ourselves volume eaters. Yes, that's, um, that's an understatement. And while people say like, oh, you probably don't, I, I eat and please do not take my carbs from me. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, Vanessa and I go out and eat and we've gone to restaurants where the waitress will be like, oh, Oh, there's more. No, she'll oh, say, she'll say you realize that's enough. No, no, she'll say, you realize that's a lot of food. And I give her the look. And then they order more. Yeah. But the best was she brought the check before she even asked if we were done. Like, oh, it was that, was, like, that was not done. a good move. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't drink, but I do sides. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, if I go out to dinner and then people want to split the check and they're like, oh, but Vanessa, you only had broccoli. And I, like I said, had seven orders. Yeah, I had 400 of them. It's about 12 <laughs> martinis. We're good. It's very refreshing. It's true. And there's no judgment. No. When I'm like, wow, wow, on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Why not? Food's good. No, no, back to you. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Vanessa, have you ever bought anything from a TV infomercial that you thought would change your life or make it better? God. No, I, I have not actually. No, no but I, I've, 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 maybe I'll go do that when I get home. Has anyone out here? Jess? I know Jess Harnell has. Yeah. Tell it, Jess. I have no freaking idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the ab roller always seemed like a good idea. While I was eating, you know, Ritz crackers, I was like, nah, probably not. Probably not. No. That's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> the ab roller is hysterical. Thank it, you very it much. It is. It's a good premise. Chuck thinks that all the hair products actually do that to your hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have ordered so many products. <laughs> I like, oh, look, her hair looks really nice. Maybe my hair will look like that. <laughs> and so not. I'm going to mount a fan to his torso so it does that. What, Vanessa, what is the best way that you've found to deal with criticism? 
Oh, I look at it as an opportunity to learn and grow. And it's the truth. Um, I, I, I think my true friends are the ones who tell me the truth about what they see. Um, and that, I don't know, I, I, my sensibility is very New York. I was born in Los Angeles, but my friends from New York, they'll let you know where you stand when you're, when you're with them. And I find that refreshing. So um, I don't crave criticism, but... Uh, it, <laughs> but, but no, it's but, not on the sides menu. No, but, but quite honestly, I think um, uh, oftentimes it can be a gift. So... Good luck you, with that. You're one of, I mean, you're one of the people that I really love as a role model. You don't take things personally, and you're pretty fearless, and so you just kind of stay on your path. <laughs> it's funny. Some, it's like certain things, that they know they don't bother me in the least, but then other things, like if someone doesn't say hi when I'm walking, I'm like, wow, man, that's pretty cold. <laughs> You know, it's the little tiny things and I'll never see that person again. But, uh, but yeah, it's true. You've got to sort of roll with the punches. If that's one thing uh, that uh, if you can master that, especially in the world of voiceover, it's just sort of on to the next thing and, um, you know, look at, it, look at the glasses half full. That, yeah. that definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you ever read a book that changed your life? Wow. Good God. I mean, there are so many. Um, well, we just want one because we're running out of time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I would say Swan's Way by Proust. Proust. There we go. Yeah, Proust is an amazing writer. If you if you get like nine weeks to read it, it's really worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, a sentence goes on for about forty miles. I, I wish I could write like that. It's amazing. Well, before we let you go, um, would you mind ordering a coffee in your favorite character voice? What's up, yo? Uh, I'll take a double mochaccino, lacchiato, and a side of Mandy. Vanessa Marshall, you guys. Thank you for being so cool, B. That was Erwin from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Yeah. Vanessa Marshall. Well, the force is strong here. We're keeping the Star Wars love coming. Oh, man, you, you guys are in for from in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Maybe you'll love him as a little Johnny Test. We have James Arnold Taylor coming on. Oh, you got it, buddy. Hugs and love. Oh, Jat the Actor love. on Twitter. Jat Actor, yes, because yeah. I have you know, the longest we, name in showbiz. Absolutely. Before we get into any questions for you, I just want to say one thing, man, is that Voice actors, not actors, <laughs> voice actors are the coolest freaking people on the planet. They are so... I see a few of them out here. They, they're so genuinely just beautiful inside and out. They help, they go beyond the call of duty. And I just love hanging with you guys, I have to say. Well, thank you. Likewise. And what you do for voiceover at VO Buzz Weekly is pretty darn amazing as well, right? Oh. We're going a little uh, Barbara Walters chain. Well, yeah, okay. Single tear. Uh, this off. What is your oddest habit? Uh, oh boy. If you want to demonstrate if it needs. Well, this area might want to clear out. <laughs> but um, no, uh, my oddest habit. I, I'm kind of, a, I don't want to say I'm a picky eater because I'm not. I'll eat any vegetable anytime, you know, but. I have a very particular palate because of some things that I dealt with when I got sick and lost my voice years ago, and so now I'm kind of like overly cautious about it. So when I order, I always then say to the person, I'm sorry, I'm that person. You're going to have to deal with me. I love you, I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave a very big tip, but so I will then order, and hold the sauce and don't put the right, salt, no pepper, and yeah. yeah. That's okay, we want you to be okay. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> I got any, through that anything one. Anything else? Uh, More sorted? No. Sorry. Uh, your, what are your three top strengths? Well, of course, you can see I'm huge. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? I bench. And no. So, I would have to say my three biggest strengths are my positivity, yes. my, uh, my wife, and my daughter. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I should probably say not necessarily in that order yeah. in case they watch. Saved. Um, have you ever acted 
Upon something that you dreamed about? Yes. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Honest to God, you know, so uh, kind of a rare thing. I have wanted to be a voice actor since I was four years old. True, Ooh, wow. true story. And so I pursued it with everything in me. And I just, I, these people like Jess Harnell and Jim Cummings and Maurice LaMarche and Vanessa and Carlos, all these people, these, these are my heroes. They really are. So I pinch myself every time I'm in a room and I see like Townsend Coleman in here. Where's Scott? Where is Scott Parkin, man? Where is he? Scotty. So yes, this is my dream to do what all of these wonderfully talented people do. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I, I, so I pursued it. So whatever your dream is, go after it. That's why I created a stage show that the whole crux of it is I do a bunch of voices, but at the end of it, it's really saying, pursue your dreams. Yeah. Well, speaking of your stage show, uh -huh. uh, you were generous enough to put something together for us tonight. Oh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, and no, maybe please. if you guys are loud enough, no. he might just entertain us for a little bit. Uh, we're going to leave the stage right now, and we're going to give it up for... <laughs> James Arnold Taylor, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'll, I'll cue you when to hit it. Don't, don't hit it yet, because I'll do a little setup here. Okay, so a lot of my work, thank you, thank you. Move aside, move aside. A lot of my work is doing uh, voice doubling for people. Now, of course, you may know me as the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. The voice is strong here indeed, yes. But um, everybody from him to uh, Michael J. Fox to uh, Christopher Walken, I've got to double these people. And so people ask me, how do you do voices? How do you come up with characters? How is it? We all have it. You all have that ability. You just have to find where the tones are within you. So, you know, by raising the tone up, well, you can, you can be Johnny Test by doing that. Totally awesome. Bring it down. Yeah, but damn, but do you, Fred Flintstone. So, you know, it's just all about the tones, right? So I found that uh, through all these years of doing it, it's really that. So if we take my voice and start, go ahead and hit that video then. We start with just my regular voice and make it a little more nasal. You find Michael Emerson from the TV show Lost and everything he said sounded a little creepy. And just a little off. Now, if you take the creep factor out, make it a little more folksy and friendly, you get Hey Fonz, Ron Howard. Lose the folk and give it some soul, and now it's Justin Timberlake, and it's becoming like a social network of voices. Use some wizardry in a British accent, you get Daniel Radcliffe. Lay it back, give it a little twang. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Flip it over, and it becomes Heath Ledger, it's the Joker, and he completes me. Pushing up to the front of your mouth, and it's Christian Slater, who would be dropped down in tone as Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Raise it back up, seem less interested than you are, David Spade. Yeah. Oh, I'm McLovin, and I totally sound like, whoa, wait a second, Doc. Whoa, it's me, this is heavy, so let's drop it down in tone, and you get Shia LaBeouf. Well, wait a second, Optimus, you mean to tell me that my car is a robot? Well, I gotta tell you, this is like unbelievable. I gotta go tell Sandy, because it's crazy the way these voices intertwine, you know. The way I break up my sentence structure is not that dissimilar to a smaller than the average bear. Hey, Rofy boy, Rofy boy. Uh, <laughs> hey, Fred, uh, you know, there is Sammy. To probably connect the voices here, you just gotta. Gunga, gunga, gunga. It's in the hole. You talking to me? Huh? You talking to me, gunga, gunga, huh? Well, from Kurt with you, I'm sorry, it's just. I love you, Spartacus. Ooh, and I love you too. Wait a minute, dum dum, you sound like me. All right, nobody panic. Oh, but panic's my middle name. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> oh, Yogi, I'm gonna have to tell Mr. Ranger, and he's gonna come and make an offering of camera films. Huh? Oh yeah, like a Kansas spinach. I go, 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 go. Well, blow me down and hoo ha. Okay. <laughs> You ever notice how Pacino's voice is slowly turning into uh, Jim Ignatowski from Taxi? Okay, okay. I mean, great Scott, there's a direct correlation between voices. This is temporal experiment number one. If you take Dr. Emmett Brown and teach him karate, you get Hong Kong Fui, number one super guy. Give him a bit of a British accent, a little more gravel, and you get John Hurt. Take away the accent, bring it down a little, and you might find Alec Baldwin hiding in there. Who if you take and drop down lower, it's Christian Bale as Batman. <laughs> bring him down to almost a whisper, and you'll find Jack Palance. Actually, I think it's Eastwood, punk. Will, go ahead, make my voice. Oh, now that depends on your definition of the word voice. <laughs> Because if you give mine a bit of a surfer twang, you might find Nicolas Cage hiding in there. <laughs> Who always seems to start a sentence down here, but by the end, he's really hot and way up here. 
Well, you know, he's crazy like Frank Caliendo doing John Madden. Or Dana Carvey doing Regis Philbin. He's out of control. Not gonna do Dana Carvey doing hot. George Bush Sr. would be pretty. Not gonna do. Gotta do. Dana Carvey doing Johnny Carson. Of course, if I want to do the real Johnny Carson, I've got to take my voice and drop it down to right about there. Hi, oh, I've got a great show for you tonight. No, no, mate. No, no, it's not hi, oh, it's you. Oh, it's Johnny Depp, not Johnny Carson, love. Who's sometimes a pirate, love. And other times, oh, he's a chocolatier. Oh, this is making me matter than a hatter, Alice. <laughs> Oh, that's funny with the mats and the hats and the... Oh, oh, funny how? Funny like I'm a clown? Like I'm here to amuse you, huh? Because I'm not a clown. I'm a chicken hawk and you're my chicken. No, 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 son. I say, I say you gotta pitch me down, boy. Down so I'm a therapist and what you need is a checkup from the mecca. Because it's an inconvenient truth that life is like a box of chocolates. Ha, 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 ha. Chocolates are cool. Yeah, ha, ha. I like the ones with the peanuts. Yeah, wah ha ha e yo ya 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 ooh ah ooh that's how it always starts and then running and then screaming and it, it, it's, it's like me in a relationship, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. Ha, oh, sweet. Either way, it's a no-win situation. I'm Albert Brooks. And I'm Jay Burchell. We basically have the same voice. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you move our voices sideways, you get Paul Giamatti. Or it's a Paul Riser. You know what I'm saying? But the real question is, who are these people? Zoinks like a school. All these crazy voices like blend together. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Oh. Yeah. It's tricky. <laughs> tricky if it's yes. Near and far. Right. Ricky. Did you say tricky? Because I gotta tell you, oh, I get no respect at all. Oh, yeah, but if I did, that'd be great. Gazoo, yeah, but damn, but do, do, ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. oh, Mary, Mary Lou, Billy, 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 Billy. Oh, I must say this whole thing is making me quite mental. Oh, hey, man, oh, shut up, no, 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 Spot, Scotty. So, Judy, 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 Jane, get me off this crazy thing, lady, with the thing in the flame and the height in the heavens to Murgatroyd, I just stage left in one. Hamana, 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 nya, 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 mya, 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 ha, 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 bleh, 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 ah, 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 ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, alrighty then, bring it around town. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, a matter of fact, we got a great show for you tonight, but I don't do Jimmy Fallon's voice, so that's all, folks. I was, I was just taking a breath. I actually have two, 200 more, so. <laughs> That's so you got that one. now, right? You can, uh, that. James travels all over the world doing that, and the long version of that, you have like an hour and a half version or something, right? Yeah, you're talking uh, yeah. to myself. Yeah, with your whole story It's called Talking to Myself. Is, it does my whole story as a voice actor. And spectacular. It's yeah. beautiful to watch online, but if you have a chance to see it in person, it's really extraordinary to see it in live action. Um, su such a gifted... Thank gifted, you very beautiful much. person. I mean, you're so talented. But what I, one of the things I adore about you most is that you're just your heart is enormous. Oh my gosh. Um, and uh, you, um, you really are a, a miracle in many ways. Um, you've, you've had, you've had. An, would you tell the story about my life and about, finding, well, um, not your whole life? Well, <laughs> because we don't really this have. This is not going We well. have uh, um, another no, really. thirty me. seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, your life and thirty. No, seconds. here's the crazy thing. So I never knew who my father was. Is this what you were getting at? Well, we don't have a couch long enough. Scotty Parkin. No, I can't. Um, never knew who uh, my father was. I found out at 42 who my real father was. And turns out he did what I do. It wasn't David Spade. I heard that. <laughs> but, yeah, my father actually uh, did what I do. He was a voice uh, guy. He worked in radio. He worked in television. And he was uh, a short guy like me and uh, looked and sounded like me. Yeah. So it was pretty neat. Well, you are a gentle giant, my friend. Ah, oh, come on. Let's hear it one more time for James Arnold. Thank you. Hey, did anybody see Christopher Robin? Yeah. Are you kidding me, right? 
We've known him and loved him for decades. His body of work is incredible, but I'm so glad that the world is now taking notice of just the sheer genius of his ability. Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings, ladies and gentlemen. I can't thank you enough for letting me follow James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> a slideshow. Anybody got a deck of cards? Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. You're your own Is it over? Jeez, look at the time. <laughs> You're fresh off your world travels. Were you yeah. just in uh, London? Is that where you were? Yes. They, they have a different word for everything over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We missed you. Yes. Well, yeah. I got the privilege to see... Um, an advanced screening of the movie, and then I came home, I was like. <laughs> That's what we were going for. I mean, I just ugly cried, um, because I have names for all my stuffed animals. My sisters and I had voices and characters. We still call each other by those names. So for me, it was just such, I, anytime I see that embrace, and so I said, Chuck, we have to go. So Chuck and Jess Harnell and I went and saw you. Um, and, you know, you've been oh. this icon, these iconic characters for a long time. What has the journey been like for you, kind of from, what was it, 1984? Well, 87 for, for Pooh, and then 89-ish for okay. Tigger. And yeah. so then, and then you're going through this whole process with them, and now here you are, like, can you? Yeah, it's, uh, it, this one was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, uh, you know, at, when they first ta started talking about it, I thought, so what if Christopher Robin grows up? Ooh, wow, okay. Uh, well, I, I think no one would ever recognize him, and he would be like, you know, I'm done with you clowns. I'm over here, you know. But thank God uh, we, we went out there and wrestled him back in. Has anybody seen the movie? Go and see it. It's a okay. great movie. Hell with that. Just buy the Blu-ray when it comes out. <laughs> That's comedy humor. No, uh, but no, it was a lot of fun because uh, it was a different critter. And they look cool as hell. Yeah. Oh, you my know, gosh, it's... Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to sell I, any stuffed animals I, over there, are they? No, but I have to say, I have to say, Jim, like literally, Stacy came home and she was like with tears and stuff like well, that. Well, I left you that the movie so beautiful. I, I went like, and saw it yeah, did. like, and didn't message. really know what to expect other than what it was going to be great, but you literally stole the entire movie, buddy. I thought so, and yeah. I, 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 I thought so. You thought, and I wish you win so many awards, man. You've done the community well. Oh, no, that's good. Well, I'm just glad they, they noticed one of us, you know. We all get a little oomph, you know, mostly yep. me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm, well, I'm glad when you were noticed, on yeah. VO Buzz Weekly back in the, you were, I think, like our third or fourth guest mm -hmm. way back. And uh -huh. you said you were always the token non-celebrity yeah. <laughs> in various animated features and, and shows. And so I think it's yeah. brilliant that you're getting... Yeah. Well, I, I think so too. <laughs> no, it, it's uh, well, I took a no, it's minutes. true. It's true. They, you know, we we joke around and um, about things like that. You know, me and my buddies Rob and Mo and uh, Tress and everybody. You know, it's like uh, wow. Well, there's going to be casting for an animated movie. I mean, have you ever really heard kids go like a third graders going, you know, they're going to make a sequel to fill it, you know, Finding Nemo, and I I understand Martin Sheen's going to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. You know, no, Ooh, they Christmas just don't comes care. Early. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but I get it. I mean, they could go on, you know, Jimmy yeah. Fallon, and and uh, and I would go on there, and it, it, they would think I was there to detail his car. <laughs> so, uh, it, I'm pretty good at it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if Something you were, to fall back on. If you were, if they were doing a movie about your life as Jim Cummings, who do you think or who Brad do you Pitt. want to? Brad Pitt. We didn't even have to think about that. No, I'm just kidding. Wait, which era of Brad Pitt? Thelma and Louise are like the bushy man, mountain man, because that's not a good uh, one. Not the one where he got eaten by a bear, because that would be too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Jim, Jim, what's your least favorite smell? Uh, honey. No, I'm just... No. I'm kidding. That's a joke. It's comedy humor. I made that up. I don't think you could smell honey. My least favorite smell? Yeah. Uh, that one place in uh, the on the French Quarter in the back alley. Oh yeah, uh, I think it was off Dumaine. No, it was that one. After you got. Well, you guys know. Yeah, you've been there. That was after your shift on the riverboat, right? It, it did was B. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was me. Yes, um, are you ever surprised by your own behavior? <laughs> no. Why would I? Uh, probably no. But uh, uh, wait a, a minute. Think times, about that again. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I just mm, ha hoo ya. Uh, as in, why the hell did I say that? Or, or. What was I thinking? Or because I've I've got those moments, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know. I, I, I sure, you know. But uh, so far, so good. Why did I? My zipper's down, isn't Just it? Just don't go on Twitter. No, you're good. Uh, hey Jim, what is the what is your what is your best uh, stress reliever? Uh, Maybe you shouldn't answer that. Uh, <laughs> I think stress is here, isn't she? Somewhere. Uh, stress reliever. Uh, well, playing drums. That's not oh, bad. Okay, good. By the way, yeah. Jim is an amazing you can singer hit, you can and hit. drummer. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, I was going to say that. No, uh, no, but it, you, you get to hit inanimate objects, and it's fun. It's hard as you And can. it's rhythmic. And not get in trouble. Yeah. And not get in trouble. Is there yeah. a, a song that makes you feel immediately happy when you hear it? Or, uh, sing, or sing it? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I think uh, I Want to Be Like You is a good one from Jungle Book. That's oh. a, I don't know why. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, God, what's that name of that song about Cannibal Corpse? Hold on. Um, you know the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. It's a, band. it's a song by Rock Sugar. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Dramatic Jim, product placement. Have can you mercy. sing a Rock Sugar song as Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think I can. Pooh's not a very good singer. Tigger's not bad. He, but he does Tigger's have heart. Well, yeah. he makes up an enthusiasm. He's got gland. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would you want to possess? Fly. I would be able to fly. Yeah. That's how I got here. <laughs> But I used a car. <laughs> and by the way, I have to say something real quick. Uh, Jim, he got here just a little bit ago. Yeah, he's um, been all over. The place. All the people that are up on this stage tonight are so amazing. Because as soon as we called them and said, "Hey, would you like to?" They said yes. Um, there was, and 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 we know they didn't say yes. Like, oh, I'll just take the day off because they don't really have that luxury. So almost everybody that's here tonight had jobs all over the place. Jim's on the freeway going like, oh my god, I I think I could make it. You know, I'm like, yeah. try your hardest. Um, yeah. And he came. So thank you to all I'm of you, glad. and yeah. thank you to you. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me out to play. Why well, it seems like only yesterday we were at your 200th. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that was, that seems was quite like a party. Things ago. When you when you told was. us you were glad that we invited you. The, I I, yeah. I love a good invitate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, does Pooh want to say anything to the people? What day is it? It's my favorite day today. Yeah. And stay just as sweet as honey forever. <laughs> and keep on bouncing. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be ridiculous. <laughs> Well, anybody else doing Winnie the Pooh and Tigger would be ridiculous. Yeah. Go see Christopher Robin. Yes. He is brilliant. Jim Cummings. Is Jim Cummings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, 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 very much. Thank God you. bless. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosfitrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.